Well, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Adam, and thanks for hanging out with me again on a Sunday to talk about what's on the wall. And today we have the fighting buggy. So before we get into that, I want to show everybody my T-shirt because I know a lot of people like it. it. Says it's not hoarding if it's RC cars, and I totally agree. I couldn't pass up getting that T-shirt. Um, anyway, moving on. So the fighting buggy. This one was something that you know. I knew of, I liked, but I really wasn't in love with it. You know, it's an older chassis. It doesn't have much modern uh, suspension or you can't really put too much power to these um, because of the way the motor mounts. It, anyway, but I wanted to get an SRB chassis. Um, I was looking at getting the Sand Scorcher and was like this close to buying it. And then I saw David's running video from Kai City RC. And if you haven't seen David's videos, go over there and check those out. Um, I'll link his channel down in the description. Um, he does an excellent job of running around behind these cars in a park in Japan, uh, filming them. They're excellent. And the slow motion footage he got of the rear end of this thing working sold me. I, I quickly just put the sand scorcher on back burner and went ahead and ordered this. Um, it was a very, very fun build, but before we get into all the stuff about that, let me run you through kind of a little bit of the history of it. So originally this was the Super Champ. Now the Super Champ came out in 1982, December of 82, on part number 58034. So it was the 34th car Tamiya manufactured. It was re-released in August of 2014 under part number 84389, and at that point they gave it the Fighting Buggy name. I don't know why they changed the name, why it wasn't re-released as the Super Champ, I don't know. Um, really couldn't find anything on that. Um, but a, about a year later, in September of 2015, they re-released it underneath the current part number, which is 47304. So when they released it on that part number, it was a little confusing because normally the 47 part numbers are limited edition runs. So this must be a widely available limited edition. I don't know. <laughs> but that's the part numbers and basically the rough time, the rough timeline of them. Now, a lot of people will say this is on an SRB chassis, and the Super Champ was a different design than the SRB. Now, it shares basically the same FRP bottom plate and front suspension and gearbox, but there's a lot of differences on here. The whole rear suspension is completely redone and unique to this buggy, and as well as this actually has a top plate to it that the SRBs do not have. So most of the SRB chassis have the plastic interior box is the clear interior box that houses all the radio gear and everything and this actually has the secondary FRP plate on the top of it. So a little bit of difference there. So you know to me a base considers it a an individual chassis. The Super Champ is its own thing. Now they share a lot of the similarities. Like I said, the front end is pretty much identical. It's that Volkswagen dual beam um, torsion type suspension, and it works. It's not great, but it works. Um, now, again, the rear suspension on this guy is completely unique. Now, it still has that wonky camber issue of the SRBs. So, you know, when it's sitting there, it kind of sits flat, but when it unloads, you know, it gets a serious amount of droop, and that camber change throughout the cycle is just crazy but so is that rear suspension i mean i can sit there and watch that all day long i love watching that rear end move around and it was kind of the selling point of the car um the body it itself looks fantastic um you know this one was a really nice one to finish up it painted up really nicely um the only issue I had was a little bit of paint bleed where I was trying to be good and tape off the rear end so I didn't get any paint on the body and it just wicked right up underneath the paint and kind of messed me up anyway. But was able to touch it up no problems and you know thankfully everything turned out well. Decaling, you know you just kind of have to pay attention where you lay the decals and everything. But you know it's a very very cool little car. It drives like a 35 year old a not well designed car would <laughs> um you know it's it's great just driving it um turning this thing is a whole different animal um 
you have a lot of weight back here on the rear tires. You have very grippy spike tires that are basically Hornet tires to, you know, uh, give everybody an idea what they are. But you have these really grippy tires. You have a lot of weight on here. You have a lock rear differential. So no matter what you do, if you're on power, it wants to go straight. <laughs> you can turn the wheels, it wants to go straight. You know, it'll vaguely start turning, but, you know, the understeer on this one is, you know, beyond anything I've ever driven. So it takes a while to get used to driving this because when you're on power, you know, you have to let off the power to turn. But if you start getting back on the power, you know, normally when I, I, I'm on the track or something, you know, you dive it into the corner, you know, you come around and as you're coming out of the corner, you start getting on the power. This one, you can't do that. You know, you basically have to maintain a low power setting through the turn. So you still want it to be turning a little bit, but you don't want to be pushing it with the rear tires. And I found if you let off completely, especially as you're turning, um, it just kind of locks up the rear tires. It'll go ahead and cut real hard and it'll tumble over. It's a, it's a bizarre little animal to, to drive, but it is fun. Um, you know, there's nothing beats seeing a true classic car running around. And this one is a true to the original classic car. I don't know if they made any changes from the original. Um, you know, they could have updated a lot to make this a whole lot better and make it a newer, better car. But they chose to keep this one as original as it ever was. Probably the only thing that's changed is like the, some of the hex hardware on here. Um, I don't know if that was originally hex hardware or not. But, you know, it is one of the few kits I've seen Hex hardware on. Um, it comes with the cool aluminum roof and wing. So, you know, this actually will take a fair amount of abuse. I'm sure eventually this will get bent um, if you roll over too much. But, you know, that is just, it's just so good looking. That rear end is just something. Um, so, like I said, again, it's partially SRB. The front end is definitely, you know, same thing as basically a sand scorcher. The rear end is... You know, the lower part, you know, the suspension geometry, the arms and everything are basically the same. The suspension is totally different. That rear shock um, is totally different. Come on. Um, so I'll try to get some up close. So basically, you have both of these pivoting that rear shock. And... Because that rear shock has so much volume for both of these, you know, they added this bottle up here to compensate for the, the pressure change. Because as you take two sides and cycle that big bore shock completely, you can actually see the fluid moving up and down that tube because it's displacing so much fluid. Now, if you had just a regular bladder type or just an aeration shock on here, you would you would have good suspension for about half of it, and then it would get stiffer and stiffer and then almost bind itself up because you're compressing that oil so hard inside of that shock body, and you would probably blow out shock caps, blow out seals, all that stuff. So with this design, you know, this thing can fully compress quickly and smoothly, and it's about the same compression and rebound throughout the entire stroke because you have all of this reservoir equaling out the pressure as it it contracts and expands all that fluid in there so it's a really cool design and it works surprisingly well it's it's so unique you know i thought it was going to be really bad to wiggle and wobble from one side to the other but it's really not it feels very stable out there running um really didn't make any changes the only changes i made was it's designed to run a shorty pack in here um and I don't have any shorty packs. I'm not buying a you know a specific battery for a car. You know, all I did was underneath the plate, there is a spot back here that I just added some foam to, so the 7.2 pack will slide right up in there. And then I added the two little rubber stops up here, so you can slide your battery pack in. It bumps all the way up to the back of the transmission, and then slides down between those uh, behind those stops. And then the battery posts or the top tray posts hold it from going left and right. So, you know, it was really simple to put the 7.2 pack in here. Um, came with the 1060. I believe it came with the 1060 ESC. Um, I don't remember exactly. Um, I'm pretty sure it came with the 1060 ESC. Uh, just had my regular hobby, uh, my uh, regular spectrum receiver in here. And then just a standard, you know, 
El Cheapo uh, $5 Metal Gear Servo I get from Amazon. Um, one of the other things I've heard is you can swap out the linkages in here from a sand scorcher and it should give you better steering. I have not done it yet. Um, but evidently that rod linkages and everything is a little bit different geometry between this and the sand scorcher and the sand scorcher actually gives you a little bit more throw because um, that's one of the other downfalls of the steering is you know that's that's the full steering throw <laughs> so you know you got about 15 degrees 20 degrees here and maybe 25 pushing 30 degrees there maybe um you know it's it's not much not much steering at all so if you could you know get a little bit more steering out of it but you know you're kind of limited to the linkages the way they are in this kit but overall this is a really cool kit it's a real blast from the past i love the look of it you know it is probably the most scaled buggy that to me ever made um well this and the buggy champ were probably the two most scale buggies ever made you know they both were kind of um, very old school Baja buggy, um, you know, mint racer type things, and they just both look really cool. I don't have the other one yet. Um, I would love to, but just have not come across one. But this one, I'm super stoked to have in the collection. Um, I love seeing it sitting there. Um, I don't run it terribly often, just because one, like I said, it's it's like learning to drive all over again with the way this thing steers. Um, but again, you know, a lot of these are part of the collection and part of, you know, my enjoyment is just sitting there looking at them and remembering uh, wanting them <laughs> so much when I was a kid. Anyway, guys, if you have any questions, have any comments, leave them down below. Make sure you guys are hitting that subscribe button. Hit that bell so you don't miss out on anything. Um, and everybody out there, as always, everybody be happy, be healthy, be safe, and I will catch you on the next one. See you guys.